Welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. Let's review the Prusa XL. I ordered it more than a year ago and I received it at the end of October. I ordered the semi-assembled version which for basically everybody that's a printer because you're a creator I think it's a good idea to get it that way because when you put it together and assemble it you really understand the workings of the printer. I have a series of five videos going step by step by step through the entire assembly process if you care to take a look at that. So the Prusa XL is named appropriately. XL means extra large. The print surface is big. 36 by 36 centimeters and the z-axis or the vertical height can be the same so basically the volume of the build can be over 46 liters unbelievable huge volume in comparison to other uh, DIY home small production systems I mean this is really a step up it comes with two print sheets this is satin not smooth and it also comes with one that is textured for various materials. So it's up to you to use whichever one you want. You can also print these handy slots, which will allow you to store these in your printer. The only problem is that these will vibrate and can make some noise. So I did put a little sheet of rubber dampening uh, material underneath these, which helped a lot. This machine does make quite a bit of noise. For example, when you move the Z axis, it has that type of harmonic distortion. Things are vibrating and I've tried to figure out exactly where those things are, but it's been a challenge. One very significant advancement in this printer is the heat bed. You'll notice that it's composed of all these individual tiles. There are 16 of these. They will heat individually, which will allow for a more consistent temperature on the, on the, on the print bed. These are all wired up from underneath and many of these components when you buy the semi-assemble kit for example the, this whole area was already assembled the micro motors are already installed the computer hardware in the back is already done and you're basically putting all the big pieces together. These print sheets fit nicely between two little posts in the back which is hard to see but then the, the entire plate is magnetic it holds things very firmly into place these two little posts are back here which help give excellent alignment of the print bed. Okay, here we'll raise the z-axis, raise the print bed, and you can get an, get an idea of the sound. It's not terrible, it doesn't bother me that much, but I don't have it next to my bedroom or something like that. You can see I have an enclosure that I put on this to keep the temperature inside of it constant and that enclosure came from printables and I'll put a link to it it's an excellent build and the acrylic or these polycarbonate parts as well as the hardware is obtained from AliExpress and it usually gets to you in about a week I built this kit from them and also a dry box which were both very impressive very very good quality notice the lighting inside of this I think that's a great feature because it really does help illuminate the print and what you're doing and there are also lights that occur underneath the the screen here depending on where you're printing if you've had a successful print and everything's good it turns green and so your thumbs up you're happy the print head or the extruder is really well made. It comes, it, it comes with a 0.6 millimeter brass tipped nozzle and it's easy to get access to. You can lift this part up, open this, and that's where you'll see the filament and I already have some PET G filament in through the roller. But if you're having problems with loading, you can open this up, look at it, be sure your filament is, is feeding into the top of the nozzle. Or, if worse comes to worse, you can take these three screws out on the side, remove the, the gears. I had to do that once because there was some fuzz coming off some of the filament. Removed it, put it back together, it's worked great. The little blinking light gives you a status. And the filament is fed through this Teflon PTFE tube into the extruder, which is in here. This is the extruder, or the filament head. And you can see that it has a silicone sock around the nozzle itself. This is the silicone sock, and that keeps stuff from, or that keeps filament from adhering to this area, and then the tip of the, of the nozzle itself. These are the nozzles for the Prusa XL. They're also the same nozzles for the Mark IV. This is their darkened, their 
obsidian type one that is very um, hardened so you can use abrasive filaments such as carbon reinforced materials or fluorescent materials. We've got some additional hotheads, some standard type nozzles that fit into this adapter. So when you use this plus one of these small nozzles that will, that will work fine together or you can use one of the Prusa standard nozzles. They come in 0 0.6, 0 0.4 multiple sizes or the uh, heat tempered hardened one for abrasive filaments. The Prusa XL is pretty tall. The top of the tubing that goes to the print head is 36 inches or 89 centimeters. It's pretty darn tall. And I think this is consistent. This is the single head unit and I am going to upgrade to the five head unit. This comes in a one, two, or five head configuration. I've been very pleased with the performance of this printer. It prints very quickly. It uses a wide variety of materials. I printed with PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU so far, and I've got some carbon reinforced and fluorescent <clears throat> or glow-in-the-dark filament that I'm getting ready to use next. It's very capable. It has the ability to print using many materials, and it's actually very fast. In comparison to some, in comparison to existing models, this is pretty. This is a racehorse. This is a fast printer. And it prints very reliably, although I've had some crashes. And one thing I've learned from my printing experience, dry filament is very important. You probably already know this, but a really good dryer right in front of where the, the tubing comes up, a really good dryer feeding filament into this printer is really an important thing. I'll show you what I've used. So I purchased these filament dryers on, on Amazon. They were $38. They go on sale. It heats and dries. You can have two spools and then it has a Teflon tubing that allows you to feed the filament into the filament sensor all the way into the print head without it being exposed to basically the open environment so it stays dry. If you look at the screen, it says 45 degrees centigrade, 0% humidity. That's relative humidity. It's warm in here where in my, in my workspace it's kind of cool. So keep that in mind. That's relative humidity, not absolute humidity. I wanted to say a word about changing filaments. When the filament runs out, it gets sensed by this filament sensor and it stops printing. It says filament out, change the filament. So we'll unload it. Well, what you get is a filament that's about four feet long. It's a really big segment. So a little frustrating. You're thinking, wow, you know, that's kind of wasteful, but there are certain ways to take those filament ends, fuse them to a new roll, or fuse them together to make a new roll with multiple filaments so you're not wasting them. And it's super easy, and I've got a video on that that I've learned from some other YouTubers. But you can take these four foot long segments and either fuse them to an existing roll or make a new roll with four foot segments. I've got a quick video on how to do that in a very predictable, simplistic way. So I would recommend an enclosure. It keeps the temperature consistent, prevents drafts and things like that from interfering with your printing. And just to comment, nozzle change on this print head on the extruder is easy. You take off the cover, put a, a T8 uh, screwdriver in here, which loosens and drops down the, the, the nozzle. You take your silicone sock off, put a wrench in the hot end nozzle, just open it slightly, take it out, put a new one in, and then you can spend your minutes cleaning the old one. It's really quick and it works really well. If you want to use the adapter in those small nozzles, well, then you've got to go back here, release a, um, release a cover, take off a couple wires, bring it out, change it, put it back together. It's all described in the Prusa. It, on their website, it's very clearly described there. It's something, to, if you want to use those small nozzles with that adapter, that's how you would do it. So apart from my enclosure, the other modification, I added that web camera, which is nice because I can view it anywhere and kind of see how the progress goes. In case something's crashing, then I can go to Prusa Connect which is wonderful because then you can stop the print. You can also start prints remotely as well from Prusa Connect, which is a great new feature, and it works with the Wi-Fi on this. This is Wi-Fi enabled, and the only negative I had when I was assembling the unit is it didn't come with the proper antenna holder, but I figured it out. I just put it through the metal um, protection of over, the, uh, over the circuit boards and screwed it in place. It worked really well. I'll show you what I did. So I have the back of the printer here and you can see how I just put a, I put a washer here threaded the Wi-Fi antenna through the protective cover and I didn't even use the um, I didn't even use the antenna holder this worked really well it was super simple super easy this is the cable for the for the uh, Wi-Fi camera 
Here's the master power switch. And then on the control panel that has a reset button, then you can reset and basically reboot the computer of the printer. In addition to the enclosure and my dry box, I've printed many, many things and it really works well. I've just printed a, a complete set of 50 wrench holders at once. It filled almost the entire print sheet and it was flawless. It was fantastic. I did it with PET G. When I did it with PLA, however, it would print for quite a while and then it had some issues with adherence. So I have experimented a bit with some stick glue that's supposed to be useful, useful for ABS, but I haven't found ABS needs it. So I'm still at a quandary. It's a little mystery why that print failed. And I'll show you a couple of pictures of profound failures and I've had them. But in general, it's printed beautifully. Failures do create waste, unfortunately. And I'm intrigued with the idea of getting a device that will take that waste and turn it back into new filament. But right now, the cheapest way to go on that is over $600. So I'm holding on that until I can make one myself. Here's an example of printing with multiple colors of filaments and also different materials. These are PET G, the black and orange, but the white is a TPU, which is a nice squishy material, which makes a really nice seal, keeping things nice and uh, together. This is a de deburring tool. Fire is an issue in 3D printers, so I put a smoke alarm in here that I can hear in the house, and I, and I installed a blade cut fire suppression system that will explode, basically, and dump this fire extinguishing powder over everything and put the fire out. That's just, as, that's just for safety. So overall, I'm very, very pleased with the Prusa XL. I've printed many, many, many things. It's been printing sometimes for longer than a day with huge build sheets, particularly to build these giant parts to make this enclosure. It was really fantastic to watch everything grow. It was really neat. The, um, the size is really something that you can build big things with this and uh, many of them. So you can put many parts on your print, on your print sheet. Print, instead of printing 10, you could print 50, for example, which I've done with wrench holders and things like that. This is a good unit. It's a little bit noisy. There are probably better ways to do noise suppression. I'm working on those, so are others. Um, the ability to work with Prusa Connect has been great. You can, you can create in Fusion 360 or others your own, your own parts, slice them in the uh, Prusa slicer, generate those BG codes, those binary G codes, and send them directly via Wi-Fi to your printer and have it start printing and you don't even have to be there. It's really great. Having a camera is great to really watch what's going on so you can keep track of it. I recommend this highly, something to consider. If this was helpful, please click thumbs like. It helps the channel a lot. Consider subscribing. Thank you.